There's a lot of hate on the internet about this car. Every time you type in F82, F80, M3, M4, there's all kinds of why I don't like my M4, why I sold it, why I don't like my M3. So I read through a bunch of actual BMW technical documentation on this car and I want to give you an unbiased review of why it's actually better than a lot of the previous generation M cars and what makes it such a good chassis, engine package, um, all of that. First thing we're gonna get into is the S55 engine. It's actually a predecessor of the N55 and sort of built upon what they knew about the N55. A lot of the engine internals um, and components around it, it shared 70% with the N55. So what's nice about that is the interchangeability of parts and parts availability of this engine itself. If something goes wrong, there's tons of N55 cars out there that you can swap parts from. Really the only main differences with this are it has dual high pressure fuel pumps, Obviously the twin turbos versus single scroll turbo from the N55 and closed deck versus uh, open deck block. And then the closed deck version, this one, there's actually, it's like a cylinder liner. There's no cast iron sleeve that goes into the aluminum block. So it makes it pretty strong and quite a bit lighter. I think the engine itself is like three to five percent lighter than an M55. So next I want to talk specifically about um, going from the S65 which is the E90 M3 motor. So some of the um, characteristics of this engine are it has 40 percent more torque than the previous outgoing engine so that's quite substantial even in stock form. I mean these are turbo so you can really throw a tune on it and have even more than that. Fuel consumption is actually re reduced by 28% versus the V8 car. I know there's a lot of hate uh, of the E90 guys to the newer platform, the F series. I don't understand why. I mean, you really have a lot more car in pretty much every aspect. Cooling system is absolutely amazing in this car. You can see that each one of these openings has its own cooling package. So. There's a radiator here, here, there's one underneath. Um, so it actually has two cooling systems, one for the engine itself, there's one for the oiling system, and then there's even one for the intake charge air. There's an air to water intercooler, um, and those intake temps are insanely low. I've never seen anything like it in a turbo car. I drive out here in the summer, really hot conditions, over 100 degrees, and intake temps, I mean, I don't even see them go above like 90 degrees. So very efficient secondary cooling system on these. So let me talk about the oiling system in these because on a race car or track car, your oil system is gonna be extremely important. First thing with the oil system is it's actually rated for 1.2 Gs before you actually get engine starvation. So BMW actually rates and certifies these motors for braking, acceleration, cornering up to 1.2 Gs um, before failure or starvation or anything weird happens with the oil system. So that's pretty big. Uh, I know there's a lot of baffles built in. The actual pickup tube is, is extremely low in the oil pan, it's sunk back. So you're gonna get a lot of really great oiling qualities out of this motor. Last thing you want to happen is going on a long sweeping corner and to get oil starvation. So it happens all the time, ruins motors, so it's pretty important. It has an electronic oil control system so there's an electronic valve which regulates the oil pressure. And the other thing is based on oil pressure, there's a sensor in there which will dial back the tune 
change timing, change boost levels, makes things safer if it detects that there's a drop in oil pressure at any time. So if you're driving one of these cars and driving at the limit and you see some weird issues where like it's not performing certain ways, it's the engine trying to keep itself safe. So there's some pretty amazing safeties built into these newer ECUs. So next thing I want to cover was chassis related stuff. There's some pretty interesting stuff too uh, from the F chassis sort of base model to the M car. First thing is the electronic steering rack in these. A lot of critics say that, you know, the steering feel isn't there, it feels vague, whatever. Coming from an E90, you have, you know, the ability to drive all day on track and not overheat your, your steering pump or have power steering leaks. Coming from E90 specifically, the actual steering ratio is 8% quicker than the old rack. So it's actually a progressive steering rack where you have in the center, it's a little bit slower and then towards the edges. So as you turn in, the steering ratio gets faster. So that's really what you want for a track-based car. Let's talk a little bit about the suspension. The stock bushings are actually fairly good. They're uh, fluid filled bushings from the factory. They're a little bit stiffer than sort of the base model cars and they really have very little deflection. I've driven cars that have poly bushings and solid bushings. This car feels really good and it's a good balance between street and sort of track car. Every little crack in the road I can feel, it's very communicative uh, between the chassis and the driver. The adjustable suspension on these is a really cool feature. I didn't really think I was going to like it at first. I thought I was going to just swap them out for KWs, but the stock suspension is actually very good. When you go to the stiffest setting in Sport Plus, uh, I mean, it's really firm, those dampers. And then when you want to just cruise uh, the comfort mode, it's, you know, it's super comfortable. It's, it's not the softest thing in the world, but... Um, that is a good compromise and a good balance. You can go through all the different modes and really feel the changes in the suspension. Uh, from previous generations of 3 Series, 4 Series, um, this interior I would say is miles ahead. I've owned E30s, E36s, E46s, E90s, and this has a ton of like really cool like technology features. Um, the fit and finish is just miles ahead. Uh, it looks really nice and modern, and I think it will stand up to the test of time. The other amazing thing about this is the chassis bracing. So there is a ton of bracing both in the front and the rear. So you have a uh, strut tower brace, uh, a carbon fiber hoop that kind of connects the front of the, the front clip to the actual strut towers, and then you have another brace that kind of connects the firewall to the strut towers. And then you have another strut brace that connects the two um, frame rails together with each other and kind of triangulates everything in the front. There's also a brace that goes underneath the car that triangulates all the suspension components, ties it into the chassis. So there is a lot of structure there. In the rear, you have a full tube frame cradle that holds the rear diff. I've never seen anything like that in an M car. Um, I've seen it in a bunch of their race cars, so it's really cool for them to bring that technology to the street. And you definitely feel it. I mean, I would say that a lot of the firmness from the suspension is just due to the fact of chassis rigidity. Uh, the other cool thing is they did quite a bit for weight reduction. So there's an aluminum hood, carbon fiber roof, aluminum trunk, aluminum fenders, and then you have these functional side vents, which actually vent high air pressure from the, the wheel area. The other thing they did weight reduction wise is obviously the carbon ceramic brakes. And then you have a carbon fiber drive shaft as well, which is an amazing value. I've never seen anything like that in a street car. The rear diff has uh, this sort of like program stability control built in. It's a physical LSD, but there is an electronic motor which controls the amount of slip. So 
there's all these different programs where you can program the diff to have more or less slip depending on the type of driving you're doing. Going to the rear axles or rear half shafts, they're rated for 5,100 foot pounds of torque. I want to see another car manufacturer that has axles rated for that series of torque. I mean, immensely overbuilt. It's insane. The last thing I want to mention, it's kind of an added bonus, and I didn't really realize this, uh, is it has a lithium ion battery in the back. So a really lightweight, uh, weight saving battery, which is really nice. In conclusion, would I recommend this car? I would say yes. 